Heavenly Father, we ask that you go with us now as we start the, our class, that you will be with us at this time. I want to thank you for the blessing of thy son and his sacrifice for us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. This evening <clears throat> will be our uh, last lesson in this series of lessons, and uh, we'll get a new study next Wednesday night. What is it within your own power? Of what do you have the power to do? What do you have the capacity to do from a spiritual standpoint? <clears throat> We're going to be looking at some of the things that we have the power to do, but we should not. And then secondly, we'll look at some things that we have the power to do and we should do them. And so that's the major two points of our lesson um, this evening. We all know the verse in Philippians 4.13 where Paul said, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. There is not anything that the Lord has demanded of us to do that we do not have the power or the capacity <laughs> to do. <laughs> Mary, Mary's up here fanning, and Jan up here is all wrapped up in her Phyllis all wrapped up in here. <sighs> I know it's hard to uh, set the range where everybody is pleased. And we talked about this before. Uh, sometimes you perhaps need to move from one side to another and try that. And uh, I know with some people that is not happening. It's going to take a piece of dynamite to move uh, some people from their, from their location. So they'll go ahead and freeze or they'll go ahead and burn up. Even though there is possibility of a solution and they have the power to do that. But they... Choose not to do it. When Paul said, 
I can do all things through Christ which strengthened me. He was basically emphasizing the fact that whatever God desired for him to do, it could be done. There's nothing the Lord asks of us that is impossible. His commands are not grievous. They are not uh, burdensome, John said. And so we have the capacity, we have the power to do whatever God demands for us to do. Tragically, some people misunderstand what God demands for them to do. And so when we look at some of the things, <clears throat> when they look at some of the things they think God has demanded them to do with them, it is in the, poss it is in the realm of the impossibility because they misunderstand what God has demanded of them to do. I want you to know something in Acts chapter 5. Certainly a, a different situation, I understand that. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price. His wife also being privy to it. And brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why hath Satan filled thine heart? to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land. While it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold... <coughs> Was it not in thine own power? You had the power, you had the capacity to do whatever you desired with that money you received from the selling of your possession. It was within your power. But you chose to keep back part of it, which would have been okay, but you are saying that you're bringing all that you received from it. And so you have lied, he says, to the Holy Ghost. But it was within thine own power. Our souls are within our power to cause to be lost or to be in a safe condition. No one else can do that for us. Now, they can encourage us. They can exhort us. We understand that. But our souls are within our own power. And so if I end up in a lost condition at that last great day, the day of judgment, then it's nobody's fault but my own because it was within my power to do something about it. You think about our talents are within our own power. In other words, whether we use them or not. I 
I said, you could talk about and think about various things that are within our own power. Think about our children within our own power. To bring up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And that's no guarantee. But we're helping them to get a good foundation. But if things do go bad sometime in their life, hopefully they will remember where they once were. So when we talk about things within our power that we should not do, turn to Isaiah chapter 1. We will not uh, take the time to look at all of these verses on this lesson sheet. <clears throat> but notice in Isaiah chapter 1, the vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord hath spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel doth not know. My people doth not consider. All sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors, they have forsaken the Lord, they have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backward. The people have become so rebellious toward God. He describes them as being sick from the sole of their feet to the top of their head. Not any more room. I mean, that's it. But what did they do? Well, they provoked God to anger. Do we have the power to do that? Yes, we do. Remember in Genesis chapter 6, the people had become so corrupt during the time of Noah. And it grieved God. It grieved God that he made man. And when he saw what they had become, we know what God decided to do. Now don't think for one moment and then because we live in the times today that we cannot provoke God to anger. God can be provoked to anger. Now understand, please, God does not deal with man today as it did in times past. In times past, he would deal with man directly and sometimes immediately And perhaps sometimes we think, well, because God is not going to take care of this right now, he's not going to deal with me immediately, that I can just sort of, over time, maybe everything's going to be okay. But we have the power 
to evoke God to anger, but we should not. Turn to 2 Timothy chapter 2. And we see what else we have the power to do. Beginning in verse 17, Paul says, And their word will eat as doth a cankered of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus. And so he mentions these two individuals by name, Hymenaeus and Philetus. Well, what have they done? Notice in verse 18 it says, Who concerning the truth have erred. And whenever you err from the truth, that is not a good thing. Now, we have the power to do that. We have the power to turn from the truth. We do. Then he points out, he describes exactly what they had done, saying that the resurrection is past already. And there are some today that are advocating the AD 70 theory, which says the judgment day has already come, Christ has already come. You think, <clears throat> okay, really? Well, these individuals are saying the resurrection is past already. But now notice what he says, and overthrow the faith of some. We have the power, now we should not do this, but we have the power to do it, and that is to overthrow the faith of others. By what we present to them, by what we proclaim to them, and by what we practice in their presence, we have the power to overthrow their faith. Of which we can lead them astray. Look at Second Peter chapter 3. In 2 Peter chapter 3, beginning with verse uh, 16, as also in all his epistles, talking about his epistles having reference to the epistles, the writings of Paul. And Peter is writing this. And Peter says in reference to the things, some of the things he has written in his epistles, he says, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, the King James translation says, W-R-E-S-T, they rest, as they do also the other scriptures, now notice, unto their own destruction. Whenever we rest, whenever we change, alter, modify, amend the scripture, Peter says you're doing that to your own destruction. But notice what else he says here in verse 17. You therefore... Beloved, see, you know these things before. Beware, lest ye also, being led away 
with the error of the wicked fall from your own steadfastness. I mean, it's bad enough for people to twist, to pervert, to change God's word, and they come to believe. Now, that's okay to do that. Now, that's bad enough. But then when the others involved, they're just adding to it. So we're causing other people to be led astray. We're causing other people to have their faith overthrown. And that's what Peter is talking about here in 2 Peter chapter 3. Look at John chapter, excuse me, James chapter 5. Here's something else we have the power to do, but we should not. And that is we have the power to withdraw from the truth. Notice what James says here. Brethren, verse 19, if, if any of you do err from the truth, well, that means withdrawing from the truth. That means rejecting. That means renouncing the truth. And one convert him. Who's the him? Well, the him is the one who has erred from the truth. The idea of convert here is the ideal to be changed. Now, if, if it is okay to err from the truth, if it is okay to withdraw from the truth, why does James say that that person needs to be converted? Or that person needs to be changed? What well, is evident that when we withdraw from the truth, we reject the truth, that puts our soul in a condition that is not pleasing with God. And so we need to change. And so he says in verse 20, let him know that he which converteth the sinner who is the sinner in this passage. The one who has done what? Who has erred from the truth. And he needs to be converted, he says, a sinner needs to be converted from the error of his way. In other words, he is in error. And when that individual is changed from the error of his way, then ye shall save a soul from death. Now just stop there for just a moment. There's somebody's soul here in this context that can result in death. And he's talking about spiritual death. Well, it's evident who he's talking about. He's talking about the one who has erred from the truth. He needs to be converted. Why? Because he is a sinner. His soul is in jeopardy. And shall hide a multitude of sins. Look at Hebrews chapter 11. There's something else we have the power to, to do, but should not. And speaking about Moses, verse 24, by faith Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. 
we can enjoy sin. And as long as we are enjoying sin, guess what? There's no, there's no, no, no stopping that. So we have the power to enjoy sin. And there is certainly pleasure in sin. If there's not pleasure in sin, you know, I mean, I started to say if you, if you ended up in the hospital every time you committed a sin, that may encourage some people, but for some people it probably won't make any difference. But, but there is pleasure in sin. So we have the power to enjoy sin, but we should not. And other verses, of course, remind us of that. In John chapter 1 and verse 11, it says that Jesus came to his own, and his own what? Received him not. We have the power to receive him not. We have the power to reject the Son of God. But how foolish uh, that is, I should look in John chapter 5 very quickly. Things within our power to do, and we should do them. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24. The Hebrew writer says, Let us consider one another to what? Provoke. Oh, wait a minute. I thought provoking is a bad thing. Well, it depends on how it's being used. If you provoke God to anger, that's not a good thing. But the word provoke in the Bible can also be used in a, in a good way, as it is in Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 24. The Hebrew writer said we are to provoke unto love and unto good works. Basically, the idea of provoke is simply to stir up. To stir up. Unto love and unto good works. What's one way we can do that? According to Hebrews 10, 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. That's one way. That's not the only way. But in the context, when he talks about we are to provoke and to love and, and to good works, that's why he's emphasizing in that context. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as a matter of some is. In Acts chapter 5 and verse 29, you remember about Peter and John as they were preaching about Christ and made some people upset. They were arrested. They were beaten. They were threatened. Don't do it anymore. And the response was that we ought to do what? Obey God rather than man. It is within my power, as it is within yours, to obey God and not man. And whenever there's a conflict, as you know, between what God demands and what man asks of us to do, then God must always win out. Then we have to listen to what God has said in his word. And so we have the power to do that. Sometimes people, well, I don't know what to do. I, I, you know, here's this matter came up, and I got some people upset with me. And, well, do you know what the Bible says about that? The Bible said that don't do that. Well, yes. Case closed. No more discussion. What, what, what. A lot of times people won't discuss things so they can find ways to get out of what God wants them to do. So we ought to obey God rather than man. And 1 John chapter 1 is the next one. And John emphasized to us that if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. I have the power, you have the power, and we should do this. And that is to walk in the what? To walk in the light. Which simply means to walk in the truth. That is to live by the truth. In First Thessalonians chapter one, 
as Paul wrote to the church at Thessalonica, he so appreciates these brethren for the kind of life they have been living, for their faith that they had, and how they were demonstrating that faith. They were sounding out, if you will, the message to others. And not only were they sounding that message out, they were also demonstrating that in the things in which they were doing. We have the power to encourage others to become children of God. Now, you know we can't make people. I think sometimes people think, well, you can make. No, you can't. Even if you could make somebody, then they're obeying for the wrong reason. You can't make people. But we have the responsibility to make it known and to encourage people to accept that message. So we have the power to encourage others to become obedient to the gospel because of what the Lord has promised and what he does offer. And then James 4 and verse 7, James says what? Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Do we have the power to do that? Yes, we do. We have the power to resist the devil. And when you look at the context there, he points out different things that we need to do. How that we are to submit to God and how we are to be filled with humility. And uh, yes, we can resist the devil and he will flee from you. Our Lord resists the devil, Matthew chapter 4. And he left him. But the scripture says what? Only for a season. Only for a season. So never think that we got him whipped and he's never coming back. He's just waiting for us to put our guard down and then he can attack there again. So we have the power to do certainly many things that are not good. And therefore, we are encouraged by God to stay away from those and not do those. We also have the power to do many good things and great things that can bring a blessing not only to our own life, but also a blessing to the lives of others. And that's what we need to do. Any uh, question or comment dealing with the lesson? Any question or comment dealing with the lesson? Let us go uh, to God in prayer. Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for the opportunity we have had this evening to come together as, as thy people and to open up thy word and to study from it. May we always have desire to fill our hearts, our minds with thy word that will help us to grow in our understanding of thy will and also therefore to, as a result of that to grow in knowledge of thy will. And as we do so, may we have the determination and the courage to live that word out in our lives. We realize that uh, we are uh, setting an example before others that we do have an influence among others, and we pray that we always strive to be uh, that, have that good uh, example, be a, be a good influence upon others, that they may turn to thee in obedience while they have the time and opportunity to do so. Our Father, there are many who are on our uh, prayer list and those who are have had surgeries and those who are still going through treatments, uh, other difficulties in their life, and we pray that things certainly will improve if it be according to thy will. Our Father, we realize that we must always uh, trust in thee 
in all things, not just in some things, but in all things, knowing of thy power, knowing of thy presence, and knowing of thy providence, Father, we're so thankful that Thou art in control. Father, we realize that in our area, as well as other areas, and certainly in our country, there are some things that are certainly going on that are contrary to Thy will. And Father, we, we hope and pray that Perhaps we can say something or do something that will uh, cause people to, to see the, uh, the, the foolishness of, um, of their response to things in this world that are not right and understanding that we ourselves must always do that which is right no matter what is happening all around us. Father, will we love Thee we're so thankful for thy grace, for thy mercy. We're so thankful for thy loving kindness. We're so thankful for that great gift of thy son. We're so thankful for what he means to, to us, to each one of us. And we pray that we always exalt him in the things that we do and in things in which we say. Father, we're so thankful for this congregation of thy people. As we strive to encourage each other and help each other to, to be what we should be and to grow, uh, certainly in faith and in knowledge, and we pray that we can become stronger spiritually, not only as individuals, but also as a congregation of thy people, so that thy word uh, can be presented to others hopefully in a way that people will be receptive to it they will have a desire to study it and uh, hopefully with open hearts open minds with humility and come with a desire to, to do what is the right thing to do and Father, we pray that you will continue to be with us and as we leave this place this evening. And may we always strive to walk in the footsteps of thy Son. Forgive us of our sins as thy people as we repent and turn from them. And for these things we ask in Christ's name. Amen.